this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn Photoshop artwork into awesome looking vector brushes in Illustrator. If you want to create great looking artwork and save oodles of time, then subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss a thing. So I collected a series of pasta shapes and then placed them on top of my iPad screen with a plain white background, nice and bright to provide good contrast and then I photographed them. And then I progressed one of them, copied and pasted it into a new document, deleted the background layer and then created a selection of that pasta shape and applied a layer mask to that uh, particular layer so I could cut out the background around the original photograph and I was left with just that pasta shape. I then saved that as a Photoshop document to keep the transparent background so I could bring it through to Illustrator. So here in my Illustrator document, the majority of the artwork has already been made. The characters for the words pasta and baby, I drew those with a pen tool. So that's what we're going to attach our brush marks to. And then if I go to file, and choose place, I can import my Fusilli PSD file and I'll just drop this at the side in here like so and I'll definitely need under the window menu the brushes panel and if we're going to turn this into something that we should use as a brush inside of Illustrator it does unfortunately have to be embedded so if I go up to the control panel at the top you'll find this button in there called embed there's an option uh, you'll, you'll find the same option in the properties panel as well click on that and I'll choose to flatten this into a single image layer and click OK. And that maintains the transparency. And then before you create your brush, just make sure that you orientate it to the angle that you wish it to be made at. So if I was to turn this into a brush now, we're going to get loads of vertical pasta stretched along a path. I don't want that. I want to create the effect of kind of a string of pasta. So I just need to rotate that clockwise 90 degrees. And then I'll click on the plus choose pattern brush and then click OK and with this open now on screen I'll call this brush pasta uh, I am going to reduce the size of it because it's pretty big compared to my artwork so if I choose 30% of its original size we can always change this afterwards uh, and with the pattern brush you can create elements for the corners the straight sections the internal corners the ends and uh, the starts of the path as well now at the moment I've only got a straight section defined and that will be enough for what we need here I'll choose to fit this in a way that stretches to fit the path. I'm comfortable with that. Um, and then I can click OK. So with that now added in there, you can see our new pasta brush has been made. I'll just move this to the side. And if I select all of the paths for the word pasta and left click on my newly created pasta brush, it will run those brush strokes through the objects. If you ever wish to edit that, you can hover your cursor over the thumbnail for your brush in the brushes panel, double left click. And then from here, providing you've got the preview button turned on, you could always increase or you could decrease the size of those characters in there. So I think for mine, probably going to go for, let's try 40 in there. Yeah, I think that is going to be plenty. And then I'll click OK. It will ask me if I want to uh, apply these edits to the existing brushes in the document. So I will choose to apply that. And then I'll select the words baby at the bottom and click on those. I don't need the original Photoshop file for the pasta, so I'm going to delete that. And then from my layers panel, you'll see that everything in terms of the pasta is in a layer of its own called pasta. Now I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to drag that layer down and onto the new symbol. And then I'm going to rename that one pasta shadow and drag it underneath the existing layer that I had in there for pasta. Now I'm going to hide the original and then I'm going to click in the selection column on the far right hand side to select all of those duplicated brush marks. And I need to go to the window menu and then open up the appearance panel. And from here, I'm going to choose to clear appearance. And then I'm going to put a stroke on there, which is red, just so it contrasts at the moment, hit return and just increase the thickness of that. Maybe you go to 20, just turn that on on again. And I think that should be enough. So with that uh, now completed, I can then go up to object, path, outline stroke to turn the stroke appearance into a physical object. Uh, with that still active, I'll go to pathfinder options in the properties panel and unite those together as a single shape. Now that will also then just group some of those elements together. You can see that in the appearance panel. So I'll go up to object, compound path and choose make. Treats as one object and we get access straight to the fill and the stroke in there. Now I'm going to change the fill to be the same dark 
kind of bluey green of the background, which will probably seem counterintuitive, but if I go to the opacity pop out and change the blend mode to multiply, just drop the opacity value down to about 80%, that will improve things. And then from the FX icon here, I'm going to choose distort and transform and then roughen. I always find that the roughen effect always looks way too much. So if I go to the size value, I'm going to put this down to what looks like a really low value, 0.5%, but it should give us what we're looking for. And then it's a case of going down to the detail slider. How much roughening detail do we want in there? Well, I only want enough to give that kind of zigzag effect to the Fusilli pasta. So with that set to 12, um, I'll leave it set to corner again, because I want those kind of corner edges in there and click OK. With that done, I can turn on my layer for pasta and then I've obviously still got my pasta shadow layer active so I can actually just tap down and then tap to the right to create that kind of offset of the shadow in there for those. And that uh, matches the offset of the rest of the shadows in that design. Now, I think the opacity of that is a little bit strong. So I'm going to knock that down to 40% just to dull back that uh, shadow effect for just the pasta in there. Uh, I think that'll give it nice contrast. And there we go. So that is how you take your original artwork inside of Photoshop, import it into Illustrator, convert it into a brush that you can then run through your paths and create effects like this. Thanks for watching, folks. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to create great looking artwork and save oodles of time, then subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you won't miss a thing. And until next time, farewell.